In this video, I will talk about the connection between Freemasonry and gangs and the Great Conspiracy. For some of you, you know, you're going to deny this connection. So I'm going to start off with a very basic, straightforward connection for those of you who might have the audacity, the tenacity, and the disingenuity to claim that that is not a valid connection and that I'm, I'm reaching. You know, it's going to become quite obvious to anyone who looks into anything I say. I challenge you. As a matter of fact, I will give $10,000 to anyone who can prove these connections wrong, the key points in this video wrong. That's how sure I am. And I'm not a rich person. I know this beyond any doubt. The first brain dead obvious connection is sports. Okay, Sugar, Sugar Ray Robinson on record, Freemason. No Freemason denies it. Nobody denies it. Shaquille O'Neal on record, Freemason. No Freemason denies it. Nobody denies it. Okay. Now, in all these sports, you know, you have gang members. Boxing, some people who are boxers are gang members. Maybe not the top boxers, maybe not the most famous boxers, but gang members include bo boxers, include, boxing includes gang members. Basketball includes gang members. Some of you, I, I don't know why you wouldn't understand that, but, and um, football includes gang members and thugs. You know, just recently in the news, this guy Aaron Hernandez just got found guilty of murder and he had done several shootings in the past. I would be very surprised if he wasn't a gang member, though I don't know what gang he's from. But blatantly there's gang members in, in the NFL, former NFL, etc. Okay? Blatant connection um to masonry and gangs. Okay? Whether it's a direct connection, a gang member who's a Mason who's in who plays professional sports, or whether it's an indirect connection the teammate of a Freemason in professional sports. There's a connection and it's a pretty solid one. Now for, to me, the more dramatic connection is what I'm about to explain to you. First, let me read, answer a question that was given to me by a fellow targeted individual. Uh, individual. She says, it seems like they're also the real leaders of street gangs these days. Do you agree? I said, yes, either that or they collaborate with them, referring to the leaders, to get someone friendly to their cause and power. The Mexican Mafia is one of the most powerful criminal groups that controls all Sereno gangs and MS-13 gangs for the most part in the country. It is modeled after the Italian Mafia. The Italian Mafia is known for collaborating with Jewish gangsters, uh, the CIA, the military, Freemasons, and so on. The Mexican Mafia admits it is modeled after them, and I have seen them working with mental health to run psych off some people, including myself. Then there are cultists who run even the Aryan Brotherhood. You know, they use the cult symbolism. And I'm going to put a lot of, you know, you should be seeing a lot of pictures in this video. You're not going to see me. You're nothing but pictures to prove my point. Uh, I've I, actually, on my original Illuminati series, you know, part 100 or something, I believe it was, I, I showed you, um, it's called the cult connections to the Aryan Brotherhood or something. Anyway, um, I said, then there are cultists who even run the Aryan Brotherhood slash biker gangs. Same thing with biker gangs, the cult symbolism. Um, Hell's Angels, for example etc. And some of them are Jewish. Then Jews were the main group of people who started communism and the black gorilla family is communist for the most part and the Nortenials tend to have communist ideologies and leanings. The structure of control starts in the prison gangs who tend to control the street gangs. I could go on forever about the gangsta disciples in Chicago using their symbolism and all other major Chicago gangs, which is the other place besides California that gangbanging really started. Now, even if you look at Monster Code, there's a lot of these people who I have a certain amount of respect for because they speak passionately about the things that I talk about. But I lose respect for them when they fail to admit their part in all this, you know? And it's really hard for some people to swallow that people involved in a great conspiracy that controls society um, would do time in prison. You know, that that is hard for people to swallow. Well, look at the, um, I believe it was the, the five families, the heads of the five families of the mafia. I believe they're in jail right now. Um, a couple years ago, there was the Gambino family indictment. I think it was 80 something Gambino family members, you know? It is not uncommon or out of the ordinary for members of the conspiracy, especially the more criminal members, to do time in prison. Not uncommon at all. They tend to have it easy in prison. They tend to get women and drugs and the things they want a lot easier than other people in prison. And you shouldn't, I shouldn't have to explain that why that is. Okay, so um, some of you 
again, it goes back to an unholy alliance of vested interests. Some people will have trouble swallowing, you know, why this is. It's just like I said in the comments, you know, the Jews are some of the main people in the Freemasonic conspiracy, you know, the Illuminati, um, the Rothschilds, especially. And then you have other people, you know, Zuckerberg, um, uh, Zimmerman, excuse me, Zuckerman, and other people that I've read in my other video. Um, let me just bring that up for you so you can have a reference here. Um, the video is titled Jews in Media Tech and Business Bankers Not Included. Okay. You'll see that they're Jews are strategically located and there's no way that they're not in on the conspiracy. It's literally impossible. So what, you know, well, you know, the occult Jews, the, the powerful Jews, the secret society Jews, especially the Zionist Jews. And Zionism is a movement that's controlled by them, just like the neocons, which incorporates aspects of the left, left and the right. They believe in the welfare state, and, you know, except for they take a very militant, well, military aggressive stance on Western expansion and the expansion of quote unquote democracy. And then so, you know, you have your synthesis of the left and right in the neocons who basically control the politics for the most part. And they're hated by both parties because both parties feel that they've been outmaneuvered. And but the key the key members of secret societies who are in these parties and leading the movements of these parties do not feel quite that way because they understand that that's what they've been planning all along in the first place. You know, it's, it's about having us compartmentalized, turning us against each other so we don't have power. You know, if they just controlled us all together and there wasn't movements that didn't get along, then there would be a very high likelihood that we would unite against them, which is their worst nightmare. You know, there's about six million Masons is what they claim in the world, right? And there's, what, seven, eight billion people? So, you know, they're, they're walking on thin ice in what, in, if you look at it from one aspect. But in another way, they collaborate with a lot of people. A lot of people are under control. They're the heads of the movements. The movements that you would expect to go against them, they control. Recently, it came out in the news, RT, um, Russell Brand, and this Bitcoin, and Starcoin, and et cetera, right? What is this about? You know, this is about them leading the movement. Russell Brand used to date a, a Rothschild um Someone who either dated the Rothschild family or is in the Rothschild family, I forgot, but you know, he has blatant connections to secret societies, homosexual agenda, feminist agenda. When he made his Illuminati pyramid, he put women on the bottom of the pyramid. Women. I mean, to me, that was just like, wow. To you, the most oppressed people in the world are women. Okay, that just is very, that's laughable to me. That is laughable. You know, I could go on about, um, how the Eastern Star is the most powerful faction of Freemasonry and people in the Prince Hall have to become a master Mason, according to something I just read from MasonicWorld.com uh, or something like that. They said you have to become a master Mason, third degree Mason, to join the Eastern Star if you're in the Prince Hall. The largest f um, fraternity, fraternal order in the world, the Eastern Star, you know, and it's all about women in the Eastern Star, you know. The, the five points of the Eastern Star are five women, you know, four of them from the Bible, one an early Christian martyr named Electa, okay. Feminism was pushed by the Eastern Star. The most viable candidate, the most likely candidate for president right now, according to the top polls and the top insiders, is Hillary Clinton, a woman. Yet this guy puts women on the most um, oppressed level of the pyramid of life, if you will, with the Illuminati on top. And, and he does like a rap song about it. Complete joke, complete farce, a bunch of bootlicking homos and, and feminists backing him up to their death, you know. And it's very sad. You know, Max Kaiser, a guy I have a certain amount of respect for, even though he comes off as very homosexual and mad, he brings up good points, you know, about the banking industry, calling them slum lords and this and that, you know. But ultimately, this is controlled opposition. We're looking at all controlled opposition. Gang members and prison gangs are controlled, quote unquote, opposition. Okay? That's what we have here. Unholy alliance of vested interest, controlled opposition, we're compartmentalized and Illuminati symbols, devils, you know, hawks and eagles and uh, snakes and, you know, uh, dragons, you know, Illuminati symbols. There hasn't, there hasn't one major gang in America that doesn't use Illuminati symbolism. And I'm out of time. Thank you.